As you know by now, the year of mercy is upon us. And the question is, well, what's it all about? And where's it come from? Well, in fact, it comes from Pope Francis. It was his idea. Now, he's a man of surprises. And he keeps pulling rabbits out of the hat. And just when you think there are no more rabbits in the hat, out pops another one. And one of the biggest rabbits that he has produced is this year of mercy. Way back at the end of 2013, he decided to summon the whole church right around the world on a great journey that we call the journey of the synod. You might remember that we had a synod in 2014. We had all the preparation for that. Then we had the year between that first synod and the, the recent second synod in Rome that I attended. And now we're on a journey beyond that. Because one thing that was very clear when we finished that synod in Rome was the journey isn't over. In some ways it's only just begun with these two synods in Rome. And the year of mercy, I am sure, in the mind and heart of the Pope, is the next phase of the journey. Now we don't have a, a road map. We're like Abraham. We're not sure where the journey is going long term, but the next phase of the journey, we can say, in fact, is this year of mercy. So the whole synodal journey, keeping in mind that synod means on the road together, the whole purpose of being on the road together is for us to become a more merciful church. I think that's the key to understanding both the synods and this year of mercy. In a merciless world, we are summoned, not just by the Pope, but by the Holy Spirit to become a more merciful church. So, so the question is, what does that require? We're going to grapple with that question right through this year of mercy. Now the Pope knows, as I know and you know, that it is a merciless world, a world that where lies seem to swirl all around us and it's hard to know the truth, a world of violence, as we've seen so dramatically in recent times. Now in such a world, what's, how are we to respond? What are we to do? I mean, it's tempting to think that the best we can manage in a world that's such a mess is to do a few smart deals and perhaps issue the odd condemnation. Now, I'm not denying for a moment that we need the odd smart deal. And occasionally we might have to condemn this or that. But smart deals and condemnation are not nearly enough. We also have to make moral judgments. They're even more important, in fact, much more important. And we do need justice in an often unjust world. But moral judgments and justice, even they, are not enough for us to respond powerfully to a merciless world. We need more. And the question is, what is more? The answer is mercy. So think of the year of mercy as being the year of more. Now what do I mean? God is merciful, all merciful, we say, and what we mean is God sees more. There was a famous old priest in Italy years ago. He had a genius for communicating with university students. And he was asked a question in a crowd like this. And in response, he thought for a moment, and then he replied very simply, I see what you see, but I see more. Now, the old priest is echoing God. God sees what we see, the mess, the mercilessness, but God sees more. It's like a mother, and God is very like a mother. In fact, in the Bible, the word for mercy comes from the word for womb. So, so God is like a mother who, who, who looks at her child, the child of her womb, with a love that nothing can destroy. And she sees her child just as the child is. All the faults and failings, but she sees more. And why does she see more? Because she loves. Now God looks at us and says, yes, I see sin. But I don't just see sin. See, in a merciless world, you are no more than your sin. You know more than your crime. So that all there is is punishment and condemnation. But God sees more. Again, think of the situation where a girl falls in love with a guy 
And someone, perhaps her mother, says, I don't know what she sees in him. But she sees something, perhaps that no one else but God sees. Or it can be said of someone that only a mother could love him. Why? Because she sees more. And if you want to know what it means for God to see more, think of, think of Jesus and the prodigal son, one of his greatest parables. Why does the father run down the drive to greet the son and cut him off halfway through the prepared speech? As soon as the boy says, I am no longer worthy, he says, stop, stop, because the father sees more. What does he see? You are my son because you are my son because you are my son. Not because you're worthy. That's not the point. Or think again of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery where the law of Moses says pick up a great big stone and throw it at her until, and, and throw enough stones until she's dead. Why? Because she has compromised the holiness of the holy people of God and therefore she must be excommunicated in, in this most dramatic way. Jesus says, as you know, let the one without sin throw the first stone. And one by one they drift away and he's left with her. Does anyone condemn you? He says. No one. Then neither do I. What's he saying? I see more. You're not just your sin. Go on your way now and sin no more. In other words, he opens up a whole vision of new possibility. A whole vision of hope. So mercy and hope are absolutely joined at the hip. So if we're talking about a year of mercy, we are talking about a year of genuine hope in a world that's full of false or cosmetic hopes. So a whole new vision of possibility, not just once upon a time for the woman caught in adultery, she is you, she is me. And where we expect rejection, where we expect condemnation, punishment, what Jesus says, the merciful one, on your way now and sin no more. In other words, it's possible for her to live a genuinely human life beyond sin, whatever the sin is. That's what mercy makes possible and why it's not just a sentiment, but it is a, an action and it is a power. So a year of mercy is not a year of sentiment, it's a year of power. Now, Faced with a merciless world, the temptation can be to respond with escapism because it's a narcotic culture, to drug yourself into a kind of dream that is a denial, or to respond by meeting violence with violence. Plenty of that. But what we say as we walk through the year of mercy is that the only real and creative response to a merciless world is the mercy of God that takes root in us. You experience it and then you become the experience of God's mercy for others. That's the whole meaning of the Christian life and it's the whole meaning of the church. A people, a community in which the mercy of God takes root so that those people, that community, become the one through whom the mercy of God has power and has action enters a merciless world. Mercy is also the only way in which you will ever discover in any depth who you really are. We say that we are created in the image of God. It's true. It's said on the first page of Scripture. What's it mean to be created in the image of God? To be created in the image of the all-merciful one. So if you want to know who you really are, if you want to discover your true self, not just the true self of the church, but who you are individually even, then the only way is to find your way more and more deeply into mercy because mercy is your true self. Anything else is a demonic mask. Anything that makes you merciless is not you. It is a demonic mask. The word synod means to be on the road together. We're on a journey. And we have to understand what that means more and more and more. What does it mean for us to journey together, all of us, 
including the stragglers. What it is going to mean for us in this year of mercy is we walk through a door. We have a holy door in Rome and we've got doors of mercy all over the place. There's one for you to walk through. But it's not just you individually, it is you individually that the whole church has to walk through the door which is Jesus Christ. The door of mercy, he is the mercy, and into a new world where we have a more merciful church. And the words that echo in our midst as we begin the journey of the year of mercy are not just the words of Pope Francis, God bless him, but they are the words of Jesus that are inscribed over the door of mercy through which we walk. Be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful.